Good evening. Today we'll do a walk about the Vermona 14. I'm just going to show you the oscillators. Everything is set to an init patch. For example, the filter is fully open. There's no EG to the filter on uh, EG1, which is a filter envelope. Um, attack, decay, sustain, and release are all zero. The um, amplitude envelope is set to um, EG2, and the attack and decay and release are zero, and sustain is full. Okay, let's begin. We start with the, uh, the waveforms. You have a sine wave, which I'm set to right now. On the mixer, you have uh, VCO1, and that's your main oscillator. You also have the sub-oscillator, and we'll get to this as we go along. So let's do the sine wave first. You have the 8-foot. That was 16-foot I just played. You have 4-foot. And you have what's known as fix, which just decouples the uh, keyboard. And you adjust it with the quartz control, which gives you the entire frequency range. Let's put back to normal, back to 16-foot on VCO1. We're switched to a sawtooth here. And the other octaves will be the same. There's no point doing the 8 and 4. You can gauge that for yourself. You have the rectangle wave. And right now I'm set to a pulse width of 50%. You can manually adjust the pulse width. Also down here, there's a global VCO1 and VCO2, and there's the LFO pulse width uh, modulation intensity. I'm going to set that to middle, and here to middle. Off screen is a LFO, which is set to a slow speed. Okay, let's put this back to sawtooth. We're going to go to VCO2, which is identical to this one. It has a few extra uh, items. Oh yes, the EG1 effect. I'm going to bring in some attack on EG1, which you can't see. It's off camera right now. And show you. Bring in some decay. I've shown you that one. I bring the attack and the K down to zero. VCO2. Let's bring it in. So we have uh, two sawtooths. They're both 16 foot. They're approximately tuned well. And I'll show you the uh, coarse tuning on this. That's down an octave. So that 16 foot becomes. And there. That goes up an octave, that becomes an 8-foot. Okay, the sub-oscillators. I'm going to turn off VCO1 and VCO2 main oscillators and bring this sine sub-oscillator on VCO1 in. And on VCO2, it's a sub-oscillator which is one octave down from VCO2. The pulse width does not affect that. Oh, wait a second. It still doesn't affect it. That's not affected by that. So let's put it back to there and there. I want to show you the glide. It's also legato, which means it can be uh, legato on mode, which means it uh, will only do the glide if you have two keys on. So watch this. That's if two keys press. Okay, uh, VCO2 has some features that VCO1 does not have. For example, the LFO1. Intensity, so let's bring that in. It 
It also has FM modulation where I can uh, modu uh, FM modulate VCO2 with VCO1 from the sine wave. <laughs> that back, take the legato off on the glide, sync. Now this gets interesting if I put an attack and decay, which you can't see on EG1. I've got sync on. You can't see this as well, but on the pitch wheel, I have the pitch wheel only on VCO2. So it brings back to zero. And do this. show you some pulse width modulation with both the oscillators. So I set that to middle, that to middle, and that to middle. Last note priority on this. Um, that's just the way it is. I think I've shown you. Oh, no, I have not. I haven't shown you noise. It also has external input, which I don't have hooked up. But you can uh, take your Euro rack, for example, and process it through the filters. But that's another topic. I'm going to be showing you the... Uh, the modulation section, the pitch wheels, and there's a bunch of stuff on the left for performance controls. But that's the first introduction. That shows you most of the VCO stuff. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you.